in-depth, investigative. This is KXAN News. Justice has been served for the victims in the 2019 mass shooting at a Walmart in El Paso. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Jennifer Sanders. And I'm Mike Rush. Just before noon today, a judge sentenced Patrick Crucius to 90 consecutive life sentences for killing 23 people in one of the country's largest hate crimes. Police say the then 21-year-old drove more than 700 miles from his home near Dallas to target Hispanics with an AK-style rifle inside and outside the store. Moments before the attack, Crucius posted a racist statement online that warned of a Hispanic invasion of Texas. Crucius could still face more punishment for state charges, including the death penalty. And in Baltimore, police have arrested and charged a 17-year-old male in connection with Sunday's shooting that killed two and wounded 28 others. The teen is facing multiple charges, including possession of a firearm by a minor and reckless endangerment. Three injured victims remain hospitalized in fair condition. And arrests have been made in the Fort Worth shooting on Monday night that killed three people and injured eight others. 19-year-old Brandon Williams and 20-year-old Christopher Reddick are charged with murder. Police believe some sort of fight happened before the shooting. At a press conference today, police addressed the topic of gun violence and urged people to take a second and reevaluate their actions if they're about to use a gun. And another issue plaguing the world, synthetic drugs. They're deadly and they are addictive and can be made easily and cheaply. And Washington correspondent Alexandra Limon reports now on a new global effort to fight back. Nearly 110,000 Americans died last year of a drug overdose. Two-thirds of those deaths involved synthetic opioids. The State Department is launching a global initiative to fight against synthetic drugs. We believe the United States is a canary in the coal mine when it comes to fentanyl, an exceptionally addictive and deadly synthetic drug. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says the saturation of synthetic opioids in the U.S. is pushing the drugs into other parts of the world. And these synthetic drugs are easy, all too easy to produce and to smuggle. The global count of people struggling with drug use disorders has escalated to 39.5 million individuals. And that's why officials from around the world gathered in that virtual forum to discuss global cooperation to fight synthetic drugs. Already existing global efforts include intelligence sharing on drug trafficking, new laws, and prosecutions. This coalition is intended to build on these and other important efforts, not take their place. International leaders say they're committed to working together to stop drug trafficking and production. To establish a global coalition to coordinate our efforts in managing this crisis. In Washington, Alexandra Limon. First warning weather with meteorologist Nick Bannon. Mostly dry for many of us here today and what showers we've had have been falling apart. There's basically just one little sprinkle left near you in Marble Falls, just southwest of Smithwick, just northwest of Spicewood. But that's it. Rain chances continue to drop in a hurry to almost zero already. Uh, temperatures outside right now are in the low 90s after reaching the mid 90s for highs. And these numbers will slowly fall this evening. 91 under a Mostly clear to partly cloudy sky in Austin at 7 tonight. And then by 9 o'clock, we're down in the 80s. And then continuing to see these numbers slowly falling into the mid-80s here by 10 or 11. Coming up in first warning weather, this rain is drying up ahead of our weekend forecast. We'll update you on the changes there. As the heat builds into central Texas, we'll show you just how hot it's going to get. All right, Nick, thank you. Before lawmakers head home for another long weekend, they're taking a long, hard look at more ways they could lower your property taxes. Today, the public got to weigh in in front of a new committee tasked with studying the issue impacting so many Texans. Ryan Chandler has the details. Well, we're a long way from a final deal, but today we got the fine details. Lawmakers recruited members of the public to hear from appraisers and business groups from across the state to try to figure out how to keep taxes down and businesses open. Food costs are up 24%, labor's 13 to 23%, swipe fees have gone up 20% in the past year, and when you add our skyrocketing property tax bills to that equation, it becomes very difficult to stay in business. Kelsey Strufert with the Texas Restaurant Association has seen too many of Texans' favorites close in the last year. 
She says the tax bill is one of the biggest burdens on their bottom line. That's why a special committee of House lawmakers convened on Friday, tasked with studying ways to slow appraisal growth. Appraisal increases have outpaced the benefits of higher homestead exemptions and tax compression. Establishing limitations on appraisals would provide greater stability and predictability for businesses and homeowners. That's been a top priority for House Speaker Dade Phelan, but it's an idea the Senate shot down long ago with Lieutenant Governor Patrick pushing for higher homestead exemptions instead. We can negotiate on just about everything, but I do not negotiate on bad math. As legislators get into the weeds, business owners hope to find a way out soon. Really restaurants um, sort of call to action to our policymakers is, is please continue the work, finish the job. There's lots of different ways to get it done, uh, but we need to get some relief out this year for our small businesses in particular. But still, it seems Texans are pessimistic about their next property tax bill. According to recent polling from the Texas Politics Project, about 42% of Texans actually expect this year's bill to be higher than last year's, despite all of the campaign promises and months of work here at the Capitol. In Austin, I'm Ryan Chandler. For all the updates out of the state capitol, tune in to the state of Texas. This week's highlights include the property tax proposal, campaign cash, prison heat, and foster care funding. You can watch it right here on KXAN on Sunday at 8.30 a.m. or at 9.30 p.m. on the CW Austin. More money is coming to Texas to help with the power grid, how the funding could help in severe weather situations. And Hayes County investigators need your help to find more information about an accused child predator and what they're asking parents to do to protect their kids. Help is on the way for the troubled Texas power grid. The state is getting $60 million in federal money to strengthen the electrical infrastructure against severe weather. In recent years, winter storms knocked out power to millions of people, sometimes for days. State emergency officials will meet to figure out how exactly to spend the money. It could go toward programs to trim trees around power lines or things like improving equipment so it can work better in extreme heat or cold. Tonight on Dateline, a mysterious blonde woman handcuffs a young mother and leads her into an unmarked car. But when her family reached out to police, they can't find a record of an arrest. He said she's gone. And the story unfolds tonight on Dateline right here on KXAN at 8 o'clock. The numbers are in and today was the most normal day you'll ever find in Austin. Our average high of 70, uh, average low of 75. That was exactly the low we had this morning. Our average high of 95 was exactly the high this afternoon. It gets hotter from here. We'll track the return of triple digits ahead. Hayes County deputies need help finding more possible victims of a convicted sexual predator. Police arrested Diego Cortez last week on charges that he used social media to find a 10-year-old victim who authorities say he assaulted multiple times. And investigators say predators are all over social media trying to lure and groom children. Our Sam Stark tells us what parents can do. Police say Diego Cortez used these two Snapchat accounts to communicate with girls. The 24-year-old pretending to be a young teen, eventually convincing a 10-year-old victim from Kyle to come to his San Antonio home. And she's probably not the only one. Investigators are, are, are believe um, that there are other victims out there. So it's very important for us to get, get that word out to the community. And it happens more often than you might think. It's, it's, it's very common. It's, it's the World Wide Web. It's, so it's not just different social media applications, but it's any type of game that has messaging gaps. Predators will um, deceive children who are quite impressionable, um, like this story says, as young as 10, even younger, and will pose as either a female that's their age, that wants to be their friend, um, really finding ways to stoke the, um, the emotional frailty of children. David Dunmoyer is with the Texas Public Policy Foundation. The group helps craft social media policy in the state. He says 55% of these survivors met their trafficker online. It's ruining kids' lives, it's ruining families, and there are instances where, like, for example, this 10-year-old girl 
Uh, she's never going to be the same again. Experts say it's key parents keep an eye on what their kids are doing online and talk to them about the risks. First and foremost, parents uh, finding ways to have more access and insight into what apps their kids are using. So there are different filters that exist that parents can use to exercise more control and seeing not just how many minutes they're spending on apps, what they're actually doing in apps. Will you catch everything? Probably not. But you as a parent have to do everything in, you, in, in your power to keep your child safe. You do not want your child to become a victim of, of a sexual predator like Mr. Cortez. Sam Stark, KXAN News. Cortez pleaded guilty to sexual assault of a child near Fort Worth. That was on May 2nd and got probation. Hayes County deputies are asking parents who think their child may have been a victim to give them a call. Going in depth, just last month, a Pflugerville ISD officer was arrested for allegedly contacting three girls at Kelly Lane Middle School and inappropriately sending messages to them. This was also on Snapchat. All three girls reported the incidents. Something to note here in this case is that the victim took photos of the messages on another friend's phone in order to document the exchange. That's because Snapchat messages disappear once you open them and if you screenshot or save the message, it will alert the person that you're chatting with. The only way for messages to not disappear is to change the settings in the app itself. Well, Earth's average temperature set a new unofficial record high yesterday at 63 degrees. It's the third such milestone in a week that already rated as the hottest on record and on average, it's nearly two degrees warmer than the 1979 to 2000 average. 70% of the world is covered by oceans, which have been spiking record heat for months now. Now, scientists say that the heat is driven by two factors, long-term war warming from greenhouse gas emissions, as well as El Nino. What's interesting about this is that we have not even seen the peak of El Nino yet. Mm. We're sort of ramping it up and usually get those hottest global temperatures as El Nino peaks. So it'll be interesting to see as El Nino continues to strengthen what that will do to global temperatures. Okay. I just couldn't believe when I was asking what the high temperature today, it was 95. I was going to say only 95, <laughs> but you know, we've had 95. these triple digits and it still felt like triple digits to me today. <laughs> yeah, well, not there. With that feels like temperature, it felt like triple digits, yes, mm, but officially sure. no, right around where we should be this time of year. But don't you worry, triple digits are coming right back. Oh, this week. good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take you outside to what it looks like from our Estonian weather camera where we've got sunshine and some scattered clouds now. And uh, these clouds sure helped to keep the temperatures down a little bit here today, although we're already increasing the sunshine as the spotty showers that we did have continue to uh, fade away here as we head into the evening. You can see the a little green that showed up a little bit earlier on. Those spotty, mostly light showers are just about gone now and your rain chances are very, very small here this evening. Even the showers and storms that were a bit more widespread closer to the Gulf of Mexico, those have been falling apart as well. And we're not anticipating that any of these storms uh, near the panhandle and into the panhandle we'll be getting here anytime soon if at all taking you into the night then just a few clouds and a low call it five percent sprinkle chance the next hour or two in general the clouds clear out but then into tomorrow morning they start coming back and that'll mean that we start likely with at least some areas of low clouds to begin your Saturday. These low clouds should lift away by about 9 or 10 in the morning and then we're mostly sunny to wrap up your morning and head into the afternoon. There is a slight call it less than 10% rain chance tomorrow and that would be purely focused on our eastern counties where a stray shower or very isolated storm could pop up during the mid to late afternoon or so. Chances uh, 10% or less, uh, we really don't focus on uh, too much here because so few of you are going to be impacted. But I do want to verbally mention that there may be just a stray shower in portions of, say, Fayette County here tomorrow. Taking you into your Sunday, patches of low clouds then in the morning as well, but those should be uh, lasting maybe an hour at most, and then it's mostly sunny skies. So we're partly cloudy tonight. Any isolated showers end, we go down to 77 degrees. Here's your weekend. Saturday starts with some early clouds and gives away to sun, and there's that spotty shower chance to the East high of 99 in Austin. We think 101, meaning the return of triple digits here for Sunday and the early morning clouds almost non-existent here on Sunday. Temperatures are going to keep building. Why? This area of high pressure to the west of us strengthening as you see the expansion in the red coloring there that indicates that the high is getting stronger. And even though the center of the high moves west, it strengthens so much that we're still under the red and still under the extreme influence of the high that sinking air that provides 
not just a lot of sunshine, but a lot of heat. And that's why the temperatures are going to keep climbing here through next week. So 101 Sunday, 102 Monday and Tuesday, 103 Wednesday and Thursday. And by Friday, we're up to 104. What about the humidity? Well, that's really not going to change a whole lot over the next week. Uh, we've basically got dew points between 70 and 75 most of the time, which is in the very humid category. Some subtle drops in the humidity in the afternoon. You probably won't notice a whole lot. Rain chances zero here over the next week. So we look to the tropics to see if we're going to get any help there. Well, there's two potential storms in the northeastern Pacific with decent chances of developing further into tropical systems, but none of this moisture looks to be pulled into central Texas anytime soon. So then we look to the Atlantic to see if there are any storms there that would develop and possibly head into the Gulf to bring us some rain, and we're not seeing any there either. So look at our first warning weather. Seven-day forecast shows you no rain chances. Temperatures going from one day in the upper 90s to all six days after that in the triple digits, and you see those numbers continuing to climb. A few mornings having those low clouds and others just starting out with straight sunshine, but it's nothing but heat for a while. Thanks, Nick. Still to come, people could be millionaires as soon as tonight. What your odds are of winning the big bucks, and here's a clue, they're not very good. <laughs> Former President Jimmy Carter and his wife Rosalind are celebrating 77 years of marriage today. The couple is celebrating quietly at their South Georgia home. Both Carters are now facing significant health challenges. The 98-year-old former president entered home hospice care in February while his 95-year-old wife is suffering from dementia. With a marriage that has now lasted nearly eight decades, the Carters are the longest married first couple in U.S. history. Well, the Powerball jackpot is now up to $615 million ahead of tomorrow's drawing, and tonight's drawing for the Mega Millions is over $450 million. So how can you win? Well, all you need is $2. You don't need to pick the numbers yourself. You can do the auto pick if you like. And the chances you're going to win this are not that great. Powerball says your odds of winning are less than 1 in 292 million. <laughs> For a little perspective here, according to the National Weather Service numbers, you're almost 250 times more likely to be struck by lightning in a given year. The Florida Museum says you're almost 80 times more likely to be bitten by a shark. Now, if you are are lucky enough though to win here's some advice just get some financial and legal advisors because you will have some big life decisions coming your way mike see i told you the chances were great <laughs> very poor chances of winning well on top of selling out international stadiums for her eras tour taylor swift dropped her latest re-release album today speak now and fans across the world are streaming to listen to their favorites plus six new songs from her vault NBC News correspondent Emily Aikida reports from New York City. Well, Taylor Swift fans will know exactly where I am. This is Cornelia Street, the inspiration for one of her songs off of her Lover album and where the pop star actually used to live. Well, fans are dropping everything now to come here and celebrate the overnight re-release of her album Speak Now, which transports fans back to her teenage years with songs like Mean, Dear John, Enchanted. This all comes while she continues her run of sold-out shows around the country. Coming up tonight on Nightly News with Lester Hall, we'll take a look at what has the internet a buzz and how Taylor Swift continues to enchant the world. Well, tonight on KXAN, it's Hot Wheels at 7, then Dateline at 8, right before KXAN News at 10 o'clock. Or join us an hour earlier for KXAN News at 9 on the CW Austin. Here's where you can find us. Thanks for listening to KXAN News Nightly. You can also listen to KXAN News Today every morning for more in-depth coverage of what matters most to you.